And welcome to Expedition Church of the Triad. So glad to have you with us tonight as we have our Wednesday night Bible study. We are teaching on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, praise God. And this will be a multi-week uh, series, so join us when you get the opportunity. We've already had one service two weeks ago. Last week I wasn't here. And we started out two weeks ago uh, with the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And we're talking about, um, let, let's maybe recap a little bit, um, to kind of because it's been two weeks. You know, we were out last week, and we'll kind of catch up to where we were. Uh, in our dealings with the Holy Spirit, we have many times failed to recognize who or what the Holy Spirit is. Is the Holy Spirit an it, an influence, a force, or an energy that proceeds from God, or a divine person who is God himself? In this study, we're going to attempt to, uh, attempts will be made to prove from the word that the Holy Spirit is a person, okay? Um, not just a person, but a divine person, God, the third person of the Godhead, okay? And therefore worthy of adoration, praise, worship, and fellowship, okay? Um, part of our misconstruing, and I'm just recapping a little bit, uh, of the Holy Spirit being a person comes from um, the phrase where the Bible says that the Spirit itself, in Romans, where Paul's talking about, you know, praying in the Spirit, he says, the Spirit itself helpeth our infirmities, itself, the Spirit itself. And the reason for that, we'll just go ahead and give this definition once again, is in Greek, the um, adherence to pronoun usage is that if a noun is genderless, then the pronoun had to be genderless. Although in contextually, you would understand it's talking about the Holy Spirit as a person. But it didn't matter. You know, the, 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 they wrote in Greek. They wrote it in, in accordance with Greek grammatical structure. Okay? Well, the word pneuma, spirit, is genderless. Okay? And therefore, the pronoun by, by gr Greek grammatical rule had to be genderless. Now, it did not mean the Holy Spirit is not a person. But people took that, I've had, I've had people argue with me. They take that, that scripture, and the Holy Spirit becomes an it, an influence, a force, an energy, but not a person, okay? Yet we got other scriptures that refer to the Holy Spirit as different names, the paraclete, which is gender, male, masculine, or masculine, let's forget male, masculine gender, and refers to the, when the paraclete himself, when he shall come. Okay? Therefore, the pronoun matches the noun, and it, it uses a masculine pronoun for the masculine noun, paraclete. So, uh, to understand it, so let's just dispel the, the stupidity of the argument of uh, he's not a person because the Bible calls him an it in Romans. Okay? Because we're just talking about grammatical rules. Okay, so we covered, uh, starting two weeks ago, <clears throat> um, different lines of proof that the Holy Spirit is, is a person. Amen. So we have um, four different lines of proof. We, I kind of I got a little confused when I was trying to define these the other week and uh, <clears throat> mixed up my number, my counting. There are four lines of proof. The first line of proof, okay, um, is the basic definition of a personality. Okay, of a person. So personality, um, the second line will be many acts that only a person can perform or ascribe to the Holy Spirit. Okay, the third is an office is predicted of the Holy Spirit that can only be predicted of a person. And four, we're, and we're going to go back and cover these. The Holy Spirit is treated in a way that only a person can be treated. Okay, so one is personality. Um, two is, is um, acts that he did. Others is office that he carried, and others treated in a, in a certain way. Those are the different lines of proof we're talking about. Two weeks ago, we did cover the basic definition of a personality, okay? Number one, a personality has knowledge. Two, feeling or emotion, and then will, okay? And we, talk, we, we covered these different, different aspects 
uh, last time of, of the Holy Spirit having knowledge, the Holy Spirit having feeling or emotion, and uh, he has a will. So we, we did cover those. And so uh, we're going to move on now to the second line of proof, which is many acts that only a person can perform or ascribe to the Holy Spirit. Okay? In other words, forces or energy can't do it. Okay? I mean, I know if you, if you we grew up in a Star Wars era where I mean, most of us have been around since 1908. Well, Della, you hadn't. Okay? When, 77, when Star Wars first came out, and the force, you know, the force be with you, and it, it goes through every living thing, and it energizes. It's got the metachlorians and all the stuff they come up with, all the Jedi stuff. Did you know they actually have a Jedi religion in Australia? They actually are, believe that they're Jedi. Yeah, okay. So you can make up a religion, people will fall for it. Okay. And, um, but there, there are aspects that are that only people can do that are the Holy Spirit is credited with doing. So let's go first of all, um, and I'm going to make this precursor statement that if the Holy Spirit is not a person, then the following verses that I read will become senseless. They won't make sense because only a person can do these things. Okay? Energy, force, it's, you know, just cosmic blob out there. Can't do these things. All right. Look, if you will, with me into 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, I'm, some of these things we're not going to do a whole lot of commentary on because they speak for themselves. All right? Man is directed by the Spirit. We will stop and delve further into things. Okay. And we've, we've quoted this over the past few weeks, talking about different things. Uh, we'll back into verse 9 and go, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now here we have the Word of God saying that the Holy Spirit searches. Okay? He seeks out. People seek things. All right? I, we got power coming from Duke Energy into this building. It doesn't search. It follows a prescribed grid to get here. It goes through, you know, electronic switching theory. Okay? It comes in on, on higher power lines. It goes through a transformer and is reduced. And then comes down, you know, gets down to where then it comes to the other transformers that come into the building, and it's reduced more and goes into the panel box, and then it's governed by breakers. It follows that flow. It doesn't search; it just does, because that's what it does. It just it be, you get, you hook up wiring to electric current and create the great proper ground and create the electrical loop, and it will flow that way. Okay, it's not searching; it's not searching to get into your building. It's not searching to get to your house. It was deliberately designed by men to govern the control of electricity, which is a force or an energy, but with no will of its own. Okay? And as we said two weeks ago, the Holy Spirit has a will. And he searches, and he searches the deep things of God. Okay? So this is ascribed to the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to kind of hammer this. Energy forces and cosmic clouds and other things that are not person can't do that. The Holy Spirit searches. Okay? Let's go now from there to Revelation 2. How many have ever heard this referred to as the revelation of St. John the Divine? Some of your Bibles even say that. Yeah, does, how many have your Bible at the beginning says Revelation of St. John the Divine? Okay. Mine, being a Rhema study Bible, or a faith library Bible, by Kenneth B. Hagan, says the Revelation of Jesus Christ. They got it right. 
Well, how do you know they got it right, Revelation 1 1? The revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we always call it the revelation of St. John the Divine. You know, you've, got, you've got Southern Gospel songs. John the Revelator. Okay? But uh, in, in Revelation, and, and how many of you know, we, we typically call it, at least with country folk, Revelations? It is the revelation. It's not revelation. It's, not multi, it's, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. But in John, in Revelation 2, 7, look here. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay. That's all I want to read. The Spirit talks. I said the Holy Spirit talks. He communicates in a way that we understand. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Okay? So he searches. He talks. Amen? So it's don't do that. Energy doesn't do that. This is a person. All right? Uh, number three, let's look at uh, Galatians 4, 6. The book of Galatians. Just a little bit of, you know, uh, biblical interpretation stuff here. Um, Galatians, uh, more like Ephesians. Uh, a couple of these Paul's letters, uh, the, the churches were really circular letters. They just put in there, the, like to the Ephesians. There's, there's a reference to the, the uh, letter to the Laodiceans somewhere in the New Testament. And they really believe it's one of, one of these letters that they just had taken, made multiple copies and went to the Ephesians, to the Laodiceans. Because they were general, what we call general epistles. They were written in general to the church. Okay? Galatians may be a little more pointed because of the stuff going on in Galatia. All right? There's some of the Gnosticism that was going on. Okay? All right. Galatians chapter, I mean, Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Listen to this. And because ye are sons, God's forth, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit cries or cries out. Amen. That's, 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 other, other translations say cries out. You know, if the spirit comes and cries out. Now, th this not only is just not only making a verbal indication of personality, I mean, of, of, of a deity or a personage, it also it, it, um, demonstrates emotion. He's crying out, okay? He's moved to cry out. Amen. That's personality involved here. This is, a, this is attributed or ascribed to the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans 8. And I don't. I think if you just went at the most people, most people, most Christians, and said, "Is the Holy Spirit a, a person?" Oh, yes, He's a person. But the way we act about the Holy Spirit doesn't line up with what we said with our mouth. Okay, we'll act like, you know, we, we're waiting for the the goosebump, the glory thrill, and all this kind of stuff. And that's, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy. You know, that's only the Holy. But the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's way more than that. Than than your thrill. Okay. I mean, you, you, we think sometimes that we're supposed to be singing the theme song from Greece at all of our church services. I got chills. I'm <laughs> multiplying. All right. And if you don't have a thrill and a chill, you didn't have a move of the Spirit. And that's so far from the truth. Now listen. Being good old classical Pentecostal came over among the charismatic word of faith people. I love the thrill and the chill. But the Holy Spirit's way more vast and deeper than that. We can't limit him to feeling the power and the, the electrical energy that comes from being under the influence of the Spirit in a, in a special service like that. Okay? Because he's worthy of worship. He's worthy of adoration. He's worthy of, uh, of our fellowship. Being the third person of the Godhead. Okay. Romans 8. 
in verse 16, okay, now here we go. This is the verse. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now look, just by simple analyzation of this verse, we ought to be able to figure out that it's not referring to an it, it's referring to a person. The Spirit itself bears witness. Person bears witness. Okay? There's, there's no way our energy can just bear witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness. So the Spirit itself bears witness. Amen? That we are the children of God. He confirms, he bears witness to our hearts that we're the children of God. This is an act of the Holy Spirit, an, act, an, an activity attributed to the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans 8, 26, 10 more verses down. Okay? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now stop there. The word helpeth comes from three Greek words put together. It means take hold together with against. He takes hold together with us, against our infirmities, okay? He takes hold together with us against our infirmities, our weaknesses, our inabilities, where we come up short. The Holy Spirit does that, okay? Now, let me say something, folks. If, if you're moving some furniture around and Janice goes, Jerry, get in here and help me. She ain't talking to some cloud that's going to go in there and move it. She's expecting Jerry to come in and take hold together with her against the, the weight of that piece of furniture. And they walk around like Larry the Cable Guy, get her done. Okay? All right? The Holy Spirit comes, the Bible says, and takes hold with us against our infirmities. For we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And, or uttered in articulate speech. The Spirit groans. He prays in aid to our inabilities. What? There's, there's, under, there's wisdom. There's, under, there's mind there. The ability to reason what you have need of and pray that out. Hallelujah. You know, say amen, you're going, you know. listen, I grew up Pentecostal. We thought the Holy Ghost was you got to speak in tongues about every six months. You would you have a service where the evangelists came in and have a wild, real outpouring of the Spirit. And somewhere in there, you might say three or four words in tongues, and that was it for the next, until the next revival. Okay? And that's if you had gotten filled with the Holy Ghost in spite of the slapping on the back, flapping of the jaws. I mean, you hang, hang on, let go. I mean, you're, you're shaking your head. Come on, Jerry. Been there, done that. Been in the altar services. I mean, hang on, let go. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And somewhere in there, some people actually got filled with the Holy Ghost in spite of it, not because of it. <laughs> Sister Rumble come up and grab your jaws like this and shake them and go, eat them, but I got to look at them. Hey, man, you're going to speak in tongues if you, I mean, she's going to snatch it out of you. Okay? And we, you know, but the Spirit with, with, purposeful reasoning helps us pray in, the, um, in our ability to pray properly or how we should pray. For we know not how we ought to pray, but he helpeth. Amen? And takes hold together with us. Now, he not only reasons, but comes to our aid to enable us to pray out what needs to be prayed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's where we can start going back and looking at the word paraclete. He's our helper. Amen. But now he's our teacher. Because in his helping, he's teaching. Amen. I said amen. And so he's at work. And so he prays. Hallelujah. He's a person. Well the, well, the King James says right there, and the King Jimmy, the King James is good enough for me. If it's good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. <laughs> one lady told Brother Hagin that one time. 
He'd been quoting, you know, quoting the Bible. So now the Greek says this, and the Greek says that. And she came and said, I want you to know one thing. If the King James was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Lady, you should, you know, just, we didn't know how ignorant you were until you opened your mouth and informed us. You've seen hats. 1611 KJV. The only Bible you can read is a 1611 translation in the King James Version. Do you know it was in Latin and Greek and Hebrew before you got to the 1611 KJV? But the only Bible is the, is the 1611 KJV. All right. Well, as again, we've already explained the, the pronouns. But the context will not allow you to force that narrow interpretation of pronoun into a, an entire doctrine of the Holy Spirit. It can't do it because the contextual form around it won't allow it. Okay? The Spirit itself, help us. The Spirit is helping. If you just, if you just said the Spirit helps us without itself, just let that out, and it doesn't change the context, people wouldn't have that it idea. They wouldn't have that it thinking. Okay? You wouldn't have Bozo number one and Bozo number two and his team of followers coming after him to use that as a, as a, as a, as a battering ram to teach something that's not biblical. No. The, the, so let's just read it that way. The Spirit helpeth. The Spirit helpeth us. Okay? Amen? Oh, think of the of what we're talking about here. We're not just talking about uh, you know, coming to church and having a have, having some type of you know thrilling encounter with power. When we're experiencing that, we're experiencing a manifestation of a divine person. That by His glory that He is manifesting, your flesh is like getting shook up because of the divine person who's present and at work. Hallelujah. The Holy, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And he's helping us. He comes to help us. Can you say amen? Go, oh, my. I just, I, I mean, we could spend a month right there. The helper. I said the helper. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you're asking for help, you're not asking for you know, power, some kind of power to come. You're asking for assistance. You're asking the Spirit of God in all of His wisdom and all of His understanding, equipped with all of His might and power to come to your aid. Amen? And join hands with you. Amen? And assist you through difficult times and difficult places in places where you don't understand, in places you don't know. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> oh, he's the helper. Amen. I said he's the helper. And it's, it's God, you know, the third person of the Godhead coming on the scene. Remember, Jesus said, I will send a, uh, if we go back to where Jesus said, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. If I go away, the Father will send a comforter in, in my name. Amen? Amen? And Jesus said, I'll send another comforter. Another comforter. But the word another in the Greek means one as the same manner as myself. There goes the whole wrong argument, it argument. I'm going to send another one just like me. Well, why? Because he's God too. God three, okay? God one, God two, God three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We remember the Dr. Seuss thing, one thing, two, you know, the little funky looking things they had on their head. How many ever read Dr. Seuss? Everybody's read Dr. Seuss? Okay, all right. Great books. Used to be anyway. Um, but the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm going to send one just like me. Hallelujah. So 
he's not going to be limited to time and space with a body like I am in my earthly ministry. He didn't say, oh, this is what, this is what the implication is. The Holy Spirit will come, and he will be omnipresent and om omniscient and omnipotent everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when we entreat him, and we understand, we have to understand he's a person. He's a person. Hallelujah. And when he, inf and he infuses our, our, pre our services with his presence, oh my, when he settles into a, to, to a congregation with his presence, And we start saying, oh, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can feel his mighty presence in the very atmosphere. And whatever you may need, just reach out and receive and say it's mine, I take it now. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can feel his mighty presence in the very atmosphere. And whatever you may need just reach out and receive and say it's mine i take it now oh when the glory's here oh we say when the glory is here we're not we say what well, we see a cloud i've seen the glory i've seen the cloud but that is like I, uh, um, in the year of King Uzziah, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Hallelujah. And the angel flew, and the seraphims were flying and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That glory is just emanating from his presence. It emanates out of his presence. When the covenant was cut and God came and walked between the pieces, hallelujah, it was described as a smoking furnace. Ha. <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, my. Glory to God. And that, my brothers and sisters, is who, not what, but who comes to take hold together with you against your weaknesses. Hallelujah. The who, not the what. The who being the third person of the Godhead. The Holy. Holy Spirit of God. I will as we begin to unlearn traditions and means which we have fallen into 
in regards to the understanding of the Spirit and begin to relearn who He is, how He works, how He manifests, His divine purposes, actions, and activities. There will be a release of the glory of God in your midst that will astound you. Things that you've heard of but never thought really may have happened or have seen yourself, they will be seen of you. They will be experienced of you because you will have invited the very God, the third person of the Godhead to come and to manifest in his greatness and his sweetness, in his power and his love. Oh, and in this place and in these encounters and these times, the Spirit will do wonders and signs and reveal to humanity the reality of the resurrection of the Son of God and summon hearts to this place. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, we worship you. We, oh, we, we stand in awe and reverence of, oh, of your very presence and actions in our midst. Oh, come, Spirit of God. Oh, Glory, the glory, the glory I saw. Oh my, the glory I saw. Hey, it's crashing in upon us. Oh, na 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 kusoto, oh rathanya kusoto kado kusoko. Mighty wave, mighty wave of the Spirit. Into this soul. So I've shared, oh my, I can't. Yeah, the news could in there. He looks on the gang of my nangle kamani, a longer kamania. A revisco trash kidilla kamoko. A lobisco dish kurang me dekadas kri kaman krikit kuku. A lekot kri krikha, le kotore ke, le koti kaba. This quali ki meko seger ne ne gene ne. Was fele gile ne kongre keske gazika. Peku veko mene, heku just kre o kole ke monakaya ta. May it be so, Spirit. Holy Spirit of God. Oh. Oh, yes, 
yes, yes, yes, the wave, the wave, the wave, the wave. <laughs> so long ago, I saw, I saw, I saw. Huh. <laughs> and now it's upon us. Break forth the Spirit of God. Shine thy light. Oh, humanity, into this very place to encounter the reality of the living God. Eku. Ikuwa, <coughs> ikuwa. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Purge us with your fire, with your cleansing fire. That we may be meat for the master's use. Oh la manla. Oh la manan la ma. Eh la manona ne le ne la do. Sit reverently in your presence. Oh, oh, has a jungle, congre, hal, ah, ah. Zoto si Elizatale to Nano Ela Tanzande Dana Tanda Nado Ele to the Latande to Nidi Ele Congre among the Nine Canaba Sweep over. Spirit of God, sweep over us. <sighs> Feel the saturated, it's fresh and new. Ooh, gada, pandu it is, it is, it is the hour. It is the time. This is the place. Papa 
Papa Kakuka. Gak ada. Oh. May we, we. Oh, maybe not. No, 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 no. We'll follow. We'll follow after you. We'll not. We'll no. We'll not run ahead. No, 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 no. We'll we'll follow after you. You're our guide. We follow after the Spirit. We follow after the Spirit. Oh. Oh. Oh, Sada Komondaka. Oh, how we love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Spirit of the Living God. We worship you. We worship your Holy Spirit. You are worthy of praise and adoration. Hallelujah. Work in our lives, work in our church, work in us. Work out in us your divine purposes and plans. to magnify the Lord Jesus, to honor and glorify the Father. We entreat thee. O Krande, O Krande, O Krande, Hapa Hapa Nika. Oh my, oh my, oh my. It is but a small thing for me to do the work that I will do. Your eyes, it would be great, but it, it's a small thing. For I shall do a work in you, through you, individually and corporately that will declare that God is God and there is none else. And pierce the hearts of men and women. O Ragniska, let it be, let it be, let it be so. Let it be so, Lord. We say yes, yes, yes. That it shall be and shall come to pass and shall be wrought in our very midst for the waves upon us, upon us, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Whew. My, 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 my. We could sing the glories here and it just wouldn't be a song. The glory's here. Hallelujah. Sometimes we sing songs that, that you know, they're, that we sing them, but we're just singing a song. We're not connected to what's really taking place in the spirit. But the glory's here. Oh, the glory's here. Hallelujah. And he is manifest in the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. And he's working. He's working out that which he hath revealed in the past. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I shared before how that when I was in the Czech Republic, at the end of one of the teaching sessions, at the end of the day, actually at the end of the day, we we would teach four four straight less four straight hours. Take a break, you know, about ten minutes. But we teach we'd teach four straight hours. We, me, me. Okay. You know, just teach four hours on the road. And at the end of uh, the last session of that day, I was praying in tongues. And one of the students came up after we finished talking to the overseer. I mean, like like she was a deer in the headlights, like she had, you know, been smacked upside the head with a, a stake. I mean, wild-eyed. I was speaking in Czech. Hallelujah. I don't know Czech. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know Czech. I think, I don't remember if I can remember to say, hey, how to say hi. I try to learn a little bit, you know, a phrase or two when I go to a country, but I don't, uh, I don't remember if I even can remember how to say hi or bye. But she, he said, well, what did he say? You know, he's got a translator because she didn't speak English. So we talk. I talk with translators. I preach, and they they translate. You know, back and forth, back and forth. And so he said, "What, what, what did she say?" He said, "He said, I see it. I see it. I see it on the horizon. The wave, of the glory is coming. It's coming. It's coming." The Spirit said, "It's here, and it's crashing in on us." Brother Copeland, I've shared, I've shared this, but it's, 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 if we're in this realm, I mean, we, we just have to keep connecting to these things. Paul told Timothy, fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee by the laying on the hands of the presbytery. And we're at Rama at an at a, um, alumni week. Janie's with me. We're on the side of Ellie and Emma. I mean, we're on the road to Ellie and Emerald City. But right in front of us is, is a you know, Dad Hagen and Mom Hagen and Gloria Copeland. The, the empty seat was where Brother Copeland had been sitting until he started preaching. And he walked over, and I don't, I don't know if y'all know, he's got beady, steel blue eyes that pierce right through you. And he's, he's talking and begins to prophesy about the glory. This is 1982. 1982. And he goes to prophesy about the glory. And we're all standing. You know, and it's, oh, I mean, the, the prophet speaking. The big prophet's over here, you know. I mean, the prophet's speaking. And he's prophesying about the glory. And he's talking about the glory coming. The glory's coming. And he walks right up to that empty spot. And I'm standing right back there. And looks me right in the eye. And he goes, and you and I will see it together. I didn't go backwards. I went <laughs> right over. Now, I know that was in general, but he specifically came to me and patted me on the cheek and said, you and I will see it together. That which we will see, that which we will experience. Oh my, oh my, oh my. In the realm of the Spirit, glory be to God. Hallelujah. In this little church right now. Hallelujah. And we don't have all the fancy cool stuff, and we don't have all the huge crowds, and we don't have all the, you know, all the, the slick, you know, whatever you have for church services. We have a two-man worship team, not a two-twenty-man team. But the glory we shall see. Oh, my. Now, get ready. I said, get ready. Oh, 
home. It's, it's, it's coming on us. And this won't be for bragging. It won't be for, well, now look at us. It won't be, well, we, we did this. And we, it will be God. And we'll just stand back and say, Lord, do your thing. Daddy Seymour used to stick his head in a box and pray. And while he had his head in the box, a cardboard box, and while he had his head in the box, the gifts and the manifestations of the Spirit, people started getting healed. They started falling. He could hear him hitting the floor, thud, 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 thud. And people got into that. And God said, well, you need to let the people see your face. <clears throat> and it, when, that's when the, the Azusa Street began to wane. <clears throat> because it became more about, he, did, he, is, he just, he acquiesced to their, their wants instead of really just staying where he was. Because he wasn't interested in being, he wasn't interested in being the forefront. He wasn't, as a matter of fact, he, was, he didn't want to see people. He didn't want to see them. He just wanted to be with God. He just wanted to be with God. And figuratively, we're going to have to have our head in a box so that it's God. And we hear the sound and the cries of humanity as they run. They run to the glory. They run into this very place and fall on their face before God and cry out for salvation, for healing, for deliverance. But we must have the atmosphere created by our obedience and willingness to entreat the Spirit. Do thy will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody know what time it is? I didn't wear my watch tonight. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Where's your watch? Well, see, I took, I took off my digital watch when I got home and put my analog on because I don't wear the uh, digital to the pulpit anymore. I don't come up with electronics anymore because they're too distracting to me. Well, you're not cool, Pastor. You don't stand up there with your, your ThinkPad or your iPad or your, you know, or your Android tablet or whatever and, you know, use all your electronic stuff and cool stuff to, you know, do your churches. And, you know, people think that's really cool. And it distracts me. And what I need to be connected to is not that. I need to be connected to the Holy Spirit. I need to be in, in tune with Him. So you can't end the service like this. I've been there. You walk out, you're just kind of like, okay, we take it. Let's, let's just be king. Quit. We do need to receive our offering for the night. If you give electronically, go ahead and get it ready. If you're giving with a, a check or cash, grab an envelope, fill that out giving online and I hope I trust you stayed with us God is at work right here at Expedition Church now he's not working somewhere else but he's at work right here he did not take a mega synagogue and change the world He took the remaining 120 faithful who prayed it out and stayed there until the Holy Spirit came and took them. And it was said of them, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither. 
I said, amen. Amen. There are times I think Christian television has done more damage to the church. Hear what I'm saying? It's done damage to the church because we model and idolize what we see on TV and lose sight of how we have to get to where we need to be by following the Spirit, following after the Spirit. Amen. And then Christian, and then Christians are gravitated to all the the, the, the stuff. Okay, let's go win people who aren't saved and then then, let them get gravitated to the Holy Spirit and we'll just do what we do with with the Spirit and follow after the Spirit. And let's change the church narrative to what it must be. Infused, filled with the Spirit following the Spirit, obeying the Spirit, and doing things that aren't necessarily the cool, marketable way of doing it. Because we don't want to speak in tongues on a Sunday morning. We might offend somebody. Billy Graham was asked one time, he was preaching a sermon, and when he got near the end, somebody started speaking in tongues in his service. And he's Baptist. And then somebody interpreted it. And so they came to him, I said, well, what did you think about that? I mean, they interrupted. He said, well, <laughs> he said, the first person that, you know, I guess, they, I guess they were speaking in tongues. He said, the second one finished the last point in my sermon. We don't believe in that. We, we, we got to get past all the church stuff. We have to get past all the, the naysayers. We have to get past all the, this is how you have to do it. We have to get into the Spirit. Because the Spirit can lead us into places to do things that we cannot do in the natural trying to copy somebody else. Because if a man, if the Lord doesn't build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. That means it's not big. Don't mean it doesn't have a lot of people. That mean it's not really cool. That mean it doesn't have a lot of money. But if the Lord's not building it, you're laboring in vain. We pray and bless you in Jesus' name. Receive the offering. We bless your finances. Be overfilling, overfilling, and this money come in your life. Hallelujah, to support the kingdom. And if you bought a lottery ticket and you win the 1.9, 1.09 billion, don't forget to tithe. <laughs> amen. I said amen. amen. I mean, I, you know, I, I can imagine a, a Christian winning that. And I think, well, if I won a 1.09 billion dollars, it's like one billion, ten million. I could just take the ten million and live the rest of my life any way I wanted to live, it as far as luxury or whatever. You know, the, the government gets about fifty-five percent of it, so you got. They say you're gonna come away with about four hundred and fifty-five plus million dollars. Yeah. Isn't that just, just disappointing? <laughs> what we could do for the kingdom with that? So, hallelujah. When thou comest into thy fortune, remember thy church. <laughs> hallelujah. We love you. We, we're going to release you in the name of Jesus. Join us next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith.